1629, the place, Salem, Massachusetts. God's people gather to worship in a new land and proclaim a covenant of faith, to walk together in all God's ways. The time, 1957. The place, Cleveland, Ohio. 328 years later, the spiritual descendants of these early pioneers renew their covenant, and a new church is born the United Church of Christ. The time, today. The place, your church. Across the United States, UCC congregations affirm their heritage and hope with this same timeless proclamation. Salem to Cleveland has been an exciting adventure of faith. Four great streams of American Protestantism have grown, blossomed, and merged into a new church family. Ours is a dramatic story, rooted in the faith of the first immigrants to the New World. story opens with the Massachusetts Puritans who joined together in 1646 to form the Cambridge Synod. The congregational influence spread throughout New England and eventually the National Council of Congregational Churches was created in 1871. The next chapter begins in 1725 as German immigrants established ethnic congregations in America. In 1747, under the leadership of Michael Schlatter, a Cetus of Reformed Congregations was organized in Pennsylvania, the forerunner of the Reformed Church in the United States. The scene shifts to the colonial frontier. In 1794, James O. Kelly formed the Christian Church, the first Protestant church with its origins in America. During the next century, the Christian Church of the South united with two other Christian churches in New England and Kentucky. And in 1922, the General Convention of the Christian Church in the United States was formed. As early pioneers moved into Illinois and Missouri, a new chapter unfolds in our adventure. In 1840, Louis Nolau organized the German Evangelical Church Society of the West. These devoted German pietists were the forerunners of the Evangelical Synod of North America. Our story continues. Like colorful threads, these four unique traditions of Christian experience Reformed, Christian, Congregational, and Evangelical have been woven into a tapestry of faith. In 1931, the National Council of Congregational Churches and the General Convention of the Christian Church merged to become the Congregational Christian Churches. Three years later, the Evangelical Synod of North America and the Reformed Church in the United States came together to form the Evangelical and Reformed Church. In 1957, the tapestry took on a new pattern when these two denominations, including several strands which had their own identity, the Convention of the South, the Magyar Synod, and the German Congregational Conferences, joined to form the United Church of Christ. Reformed, Christian, Congregational, Evangelical. Together, we are one body with an historic legacy of ministry. From each of our traditions come the building blocks of faith which make us a unique people of God. Our family history is an anthology of personal stories 
testimonies of devotion in the struggle to walk together in all God's ways. This great endeavor began with the 16th century European reformers, Calvin, Zwingli, Luther, and Bootser. All four of our parent denominations possessed this Reformation spirit at their center. The Puritans came to this country after trying to reform the Church of England. The Christian Church arose out of the attempt to reform colonial Methodism. The Evangelical Church had its roots in the restructured Evangelical Church Union instituted by King Frederick William III of Prussia. Our United Church of Christ forebearers lived in the spirit of Reformation, building a church whose foundation was firmly anchored in the teachings of Christ and working for a society based on religious tolerance and human rights. As early as 1700, Samuel Sewell, Chief Justice of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, spoke out against the injustice of slavery. In 1838, Sarah Grimke, abolitionist and advocate for women's rights, wrote The Equality of the Sexes and the Condition of Woman. In the mid-19th century, the Congregational Minister Henry Ward Beecher and his equally famous sister, Harriet Beecher Stowe, author of Uncle Tom's Cabin, were in the vanguard of the anti-slavery movement. As the 20th century approached, other social prophets, like Washington Gladden, proclaimed that the Christian gospel is relevant to all of society's problems. Theologians, social ethicists, and educators H. Richard, Reinhold, and Hulda Niebuhr from the Evangelical Synod wrote eloquently concerning the role of Christian ministry reforming the imperfect nature of our society. Today, the spirit of the Reformation continues as our church reaffirms our call to walk together in all God's ways. Just as our four parent denominations were rooted in the spirit of Reformation, so too were they Christian in their mission. From our earliest beginnings, the biblical imperatives to love God and our neighbors as ourselves have been at the heart of our ministry. Numerous men and women have dedicated their lives to author living stories of Christian love. The first Bible printed in America was published by missionary John Eliot for American Indians in 1663. In 1812, our forebears established the first mission agency, the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions, the predecessor of our present United Church Board for World Ministries. Our earliest missionaries traveled to India, Japan, China, and the Sandwich Islands to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Preaching and teaching have always been an integral part of our Christian mission. Theologian Jonathan Edwards was instrumental in bringing about the Great Awakening, the massive revival movement of the early 1700s. The black congregational minister, Lemuel Haynes, preached dynamically after the American Revolution. In the 19th century, Horace Bushnell founded the modern Christian education movement. Although men have traditionally dominated church leadership positions, women too have been in the vanguard of our church's ministry. In 1637, Anne Hutchinson, despite opposition by male church leaders, voiced her criticism of sermons and initiated women's meetings to discuss theology and doctrine. In Christian and congregational churches, women were active as preachers of the gospel. The first woman to be ordained as a minister in the United States was Antoinette Brown in 1853. Other historic figures have made an impact in our Christian witness. 19th century Reformed theologian John Nevin and church historian Philip Schaff frontier missionary Narcissa Whitman, evangelical church leader Joseph Rieger, foreign missionary Frank Laubach, and scholar Luther Weibel, who coordinated the translation of the revised standard version of the Bible. The witness of our Christian tradition continues today as we seek to discover new ways to tell and embody personal stories for Christ in our global community. Our heritage is Reformed and Christian. 
it is also congregational. Each of our four traditions emphasize the importance of the local congregation, the freedom to choose its own form of worship and to order its own affairs. This conviction of independence was alive during the Revolutionary War. Prior to the Boston Tea Party, the German Reformed community fought against discriminatory taxes. John Hancock and 13 other congregational leaders were signers of the Declaration of Independence. And many of our ancestors were in the forefront of the American Revolution, battling for independence from the British Crown. This spirit of self-determination was particularly manifest in our forebears' emphasis on education. Congregational leadership was instrumental in establishing a number of educational firsts. The first college in America, Harvard, in 1636. The first college for American Indians, Dartmouth, in 1769. The first co-educational college, Oberlin, in 1834. The first college for women, Mount Holyoke, in 1837. Our educational heritage includes many other excellent institutions of higher learning, including Elon, Elmhurst, and Franklin and Marshall Colleges. Prior to the Civil War, our forebears took a radical stand against slavery. Congregational leaders provided legal resources for imprisoned Mindy Africans who commandeered the slave ship La Amistad. With their acquittal by the Supreme Court and the funds raised by the Amistad Committee, the Mindy captives were able to return home to their native land. The Amistad Committee, in turn, helped to create the American Missionary Association. After the Civil War, the AMA now a division of our United Church Board for Homeland Ministries, established hundreds of academies to help educate those freed from slavery. Today, a number of outstanding colleges, predominantly for black youth, have emerged from these academies. Fisk, Dillard, Lemoyne Owen, Houston Tillotson, Talladega, and Tougaloo. Freedom from political oppression, freedom from illiteracy, and freedom from pain and suffering highlight our heritage of ministry. We have demonstrated our commitment to ministries of compassion through founding and support of hospitals, homes for the elderly, centers for the developmentally challenged, and neighborhood houses. Deaconess Hospital in St. Louis was founded by the Evangelical Synod. The Christian Church established a home for elderly clergy in Castile, New York. Thomas Gallaudet, a congregational minister, developed a health care facility for the handicapped in Hartford, Connecticut. Bethany Children's Home in Womelsdorf, Pennsylvania, was originally organized by the Reformed Church for Orphaned Children in Philadelphia. And the Deaconess Movement was instrumental in founding 16 health and human service organizations. Our forebears embodied their freedom as God's people in many ways, yet they also affirmed that they were bound together as members of the body of Christ. To walk together in all God's ways brings with it a joyous responsibility to evangelize, to proclaim the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ through word and action. Our evangelical roots run deep. From our earliest beginnings, our missionaries have shared the good news with all God's people, with American Indians, the Seneca, Stockbridge, Cherokee, Dakota, and Winnebago, with the Japanese through Joseph Najima, 
who established Doshisha College. Through the Hawaiian ministries inspired by Henry Obukaya and throughout the world, thousands of foreign missionaries have lived out our evangelical conviction by preaching the word, establishing new churches, building hospitals, initiating social service care, and founding schools, universities, and seminaries. Throughout the years, our church's women's societies have funded and sent many of these dedicated workers to the mission front. We have also proclaimed an inward mission, welcoming into our fellowship the diverse ethnic and theological groups who have immigrated to our country, seeking many of the same fundamental freedoms as did our forebears. Into our predecessor denominations, we have welcomed Armenians, Cubans, Filipinos, Koreans, Norwegians, Hispanics, Samoans, Hungarians, and many more. Each has contributed to the richness of texture and design in our tapestry of faith. Today our mission commitment emphasizes a shared ministry. Embracing the spirit of partnership, we work with international communities to plant the seeds of ministry, sharing God's resources to serve others in the name of Jesus Christ in every time and in every place. For example, because of the outgrowth of early mission work, the Iglesia Evangelica Unida de Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico Conference, was organized through the initiative of indigenous church leaders. Having an evangelical witness also means being inclusive and ecumenical as well as international. Women, youth, and people of color have an integral role in the life and ministry of our denomination. We are partners in a global enterprise. Mission has become a two-way street, and today, American churches are receiving the blessings of Christian witness from churches throughout the world. Reformed. Christian, Congregational, Evangelical. Our story is more than a history text. It is an inspirational witness of over three centuries of committed ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. It is a guidebook for our journey of faith. We are called to be reformed, renewed in spirit to embody a gospel which reforms society. We are called to be Christian, members of a biblically rooted faith seeking to share the love of Christ. We are called to be congregational, individual families of faith gathering to worship and work for God's sovereign reign. We are called to be evangelical, evangelists, people who not only speak their faith but live it in every time and every place. Reformed, Christian, congregational, evangelical. We are each of these and much more. We are the United Church of Christ, a united and uniting church. The story of our journey from Salem to Cleveland portrays an adventurous saga of Christian ministry. Now the journey continues as we stand on the brink of a new century. A new chapter of faithful living awaits on the horizon before us. Reformed, Christian, Congregational, Evangelical. Four distinct traditions united in a common ministry to walk the way of Christian discipleship telling the story of God's amazing love. It is the Reformed way. It is the Christian way. It is the congregational way. It is the evangelical way. It is the way of the United Church of Christ. <laughs>